Flowers need no introduction. Apart from their beauty, they announce the start of seasons, they are used for scents, they play a part in making honey and serve as a cure for certain medical conditions. More than any other plant, flowers have long been a source of fascination and inspiration for different cultures throughout the world. People have been, and still are, inspired by the beauty and fragrance of flowers, associating them with romance, best wishes, and affection. This is the home of the Dutch. It is a small country, with almost a third of its land having been reclaimed from the sea. The Netherlands, meaning the lowlands, is a country that is located in the northwest part of Europe. It is regarded as the flower country because before other people had even thought about it, the Dutch had already started to make money out of flowers. Despite the glamorous and welcoming display by the industry players, the crew was met with a lot of suspicion when it started to dig deeper. The players included investors, companies connected to the flower farms in one way or the other, health institutions, trade union members and government officials. In many cases, access to the farms in both Kenya and the Netherlands was denied. Numerous workers in both countries turned down requests to be interviewed. By the time this film was completed, Many phone calls and email requests had had no response. It's one of the industries I happen to get familiar with worldwide, where most of the workers are in fear. It's a worldwide phenomenon in this industry. And I always said, when workers are in fear, there is something to be feared for. Guards are usually placed in such places to provide security. This is normal. But in addition to securing the farms, they have strict instructions to keep the media at bay. And when members of the press are engaged, it is usually by design. In some farms, no photography signs were evident. Flower farms are guarded like military installations. They have become no-go zones. Flora Holland is one of the biggest flower auction halls in the Netherlands today. With an annual turnover of 4.1 billion euros, it imports plants and flowers from 60 different countries and eventually exports them to customers in 140 countries through the 46 clocks. Every morning roses are cut in Kenya. During the night, that flower is leaving uh, for Europe. Those flowers are unpacked here and are sold within three or four days, the flowers can be at the flower shop somewhere in Europe. For us, roses are very important because we are the number one rose auction in the world. We stand for quality of the flowers and we want to know always that if we promise the quality is good, that it is good. For various reasons, growing flowers in the Netherlands is tough. Although expansion is limited owing to the size of the country, another obstacle for investors is the weather. As a result, large-scale farmers were forced to seek space beyond the lowlands. I read a paper by 
the Dutch flower uh, business people here in the Netherlands that a country they should go to, which was very promising for them to grow their flowers, um, was Kenya. And it had all the good things. Kenya is among other countries in Africa which have flower farms that dot parts of the Rift Valley and the central region. Millions of stems are currently finding their way to Europe from various parts of the country, from the western and central regions, and down south to the Maasai Plains towards the Tanzanian border. Flowers are flown on a daily basis to markets outside Africa. These are from, uh, from Algeria. For the last 15-20 years, uh, Kenya is becoming a more and more important player on the international uh, play field of, uh, of roses. Um, in 2011, roughly more than 40% are coming from Kenya. Roughly 1.6 billion rose stamps coming out of Kenya through Florida Holland. On average, a middle-sized farm employing about 1,200 workers delivers 120,000 stems a day. Roses are harvested on a daily basis about six weeks after planting. You can say more or less 17 to 80 percent of the total of the price of one flower is earned by the producer. Uh, the ones who really earn the money are the retailers. They make huge profits up to 40, 45 percent. Um, uh, my husband's parents and my daughter and my men, they are in the flowers. We yes. are here the 26 years. I like the big flowers. Here they are the roses small. Yes. Where they come from and the colors. I like the colors and the smell. Yeah. We buy many roses from Kenya and we like it. Our clients like it too. And therefore they are coming back and back and back. Well, it depends on uh, what day it is, if, if it's the weekend, if it's a special uh, day, if it's holiday or Mother's Day, Mother's Day we sell a lot. You can see how some of these farmers have developed themselves, where they were driving in small cars initially, uh, with having one lorry driving to the, the international airport. You can see how many lorries are driving there nowadays and how many fancy big cars they are driving themselves. The area around Naivasha is where 70% of the flower farms are located, thanks largely to Lake Naivasha seen in the background. The flower industry relies on hundreds of clearing and forwarding agents and air transport companies. This is in addition to companies that erect greenhouses, those that provide irrigation facilities and chemicals, it is a global trade, with billions of dollars changing hands from day to day. I visited one of the farms in Naivasha in an effort to understand the business better. But this did not yield any fruit. I have my partners to protect, said a manager of a multinational company when asked for an in-depth interview. However, some people who had previously worked in various greenhouses in Naivasha were more than willing to share their experiences. Uh, I got an opportunity to work with Sha agencies by that time, uh, which was later turned to Sha Karuturi and at the moment Karuturi Limited. Nilipo ingia, nilianza kuathirika, nikaanza kuwa na congestion ya kifua, ama ile shida ya kifua, nikaanza kushindwa na kupumua. Wakati mwingi yale maua ikiingia, ninashindwa kabisa kupumua. After working there for around three years, uh, my right eye, uh, I almost lost it. Some spillage of the chemicals, because I used to work in the fertigation department, uh, even after washing the eyes and cleaning them with running water, I think it got worse. Yo, dao ime ni duru sana kwa sababu singeza kufanya kazi pale ndani. Nisikia na umuwa na kituwa, kifuwa, kunos breed. Hadi ni kamu watu ni ache ile kazi. Fide kampu ni liyedelea kukoma, diyo sasa ikaasa kuigisa sasa corruption, kuadikana kwa hongo, Sasa kama ni wanaume wanahongana, kama ni wanawake, sasa lasima 
ukutane na mkubwa ama uwe sasa abuse sexually ili sasa upate kupata ile kazi. Ati ile kazi itakutafutia ndio itakuwa kwa muda mfupi. Sasa itabidi akutumie yeye. Ndio uendelee na ndio uendelee na kazi. My name is Nancy Mhonja Mgatia. Here my children is Mike Kavura Mgatia and Anton Maina Mgatia. I was in big trend companies and I was a harvester. I was harvesting flowers. The salary are down, the work is hard and every time I fell sick, I fell sick so I, I decided to desert that job. My chest was aching very much, I was in pain. Every time, uh, at least one week at a month, I was not working. Mi mwenye na gonjeka, watutu wana gonjeka. Sasa hata huu nili mzalia, huko unona ni meishi tu kusumbuka na ya kuna wakati ya komzima. Awe nyo nimezalia, huko waneishi tu kuangaika. Sasa niliamua kufungua kakibanda, at least nikae nao. Jobs have become increasingly scarce and it's tough to get a job in Kenya. Those employed in the flower industry are hitting close to the 100,000 mark and two-thirds of them are women. All these flower farms attract many people from all over the country because there is job they offer. 70% of the labor force in the flower, flower farms, that is manual job is got from the women. These are women or girls who are not highly educated. Just like the plant itself, the various stages in flower production require less of physical handling but more of gentle care. From planting, pruning, harvesting, grading and packing, Flowers are delicate to handle, and women are natural handlers. They are considered to be more careful and therefore more productive. However, their good fortune in being employed is also the cause of their suffering. Nikatolewa girl brother, nikatolewa apedex, na still your problem bado inanipushwa na sema ni redevelop, leave a problem. And it started right when I entered that company. Nilikuwa nafanya kazi kama parking girl, Osirian. Nilikuwa natoka kwa nyumba saa kumi na moja. Diyo kwa sababu six ni natakikana kwa kazi. Na nitatoka five ama five thirty. Tena nifike tena saa moja. Ikakuwa hard. Watoto wako shure na nini mimi peke yangu ni nakompua nyumba na walipia transport. So nilikuwa suppose lazima niende town. Sani nafanya kazi ni kitokea saa kumi na moja ni naoga. Where do I get any other money? From where? The sex working. Yes. This yes. is Lucy Wamboi, a former commercial sex worker who used to operate in Naivasha town. Vile nilisariwa mimi, siku wa nifanye, nikue kwa prostitution. Lakini ishida ili nibidi niende wapi, niende kumuta. It is so painful. Very painful. I, I can even cry, imagine. It is very painful. For our farms, these were sungus here. They are not good. Being a woman, you first and foremost come in with a lot of challenges. They suffer specific prejudices that are only possible especially in a culture like ours, and even in the global culture, women have got uh, uh, biological responsibility, that, like childbearing, women are caregivers in families. So if you look at the overall, being a woman in itself is, is much bigger than you can say employees. Most of the flower farms for you to retain the jobs, you have to dance to the tune. 
of the your employer and mainly it's not the employer directly it is the supervisors kuna mkubwa tulikuwaga na yeye alikuwa supervisor wangu hawakuwa na tulipa pesa mzuri hiyo pesa haikuwa hata inanitosha hapo hapo tu ndio nilipata shida ya kupata mtu akaniambukiza ni kuja kukodua ni HIV kakufa na mimi akanitupa nje Nematodes are worms that survive in the ground and can attack plants. A handful of soil can contain billions of different species of bacteria, reasons why chemicals are used to prevent worms and mites from attacking flowers from the ground and to keep off pests in the air. This is good for the industry but deadly to humans. It is only due to their non-edible nature that flowers are exempted from inspection. Otherwise, if measured, the levels of chemicals in them are relatively high. Although there are a few farms that are using fewer chemicals and which have started to use organic methods to contain infections in flower farming, the majority of the farms still rely heavily on the use of chemicals, some of which have even been banned. Susan and Esther are two women who are now struggling to have children. But sadly, this is unlikely to be possible years after they stopped working in greenhouses because of the exposure to dangerous chemicals. We just saw the tractor getting in the machine and it started spraying and the following morning I just woke up and uh, reported at work but I was experiencing some pains uh, at my raw abdominal but Mm, unfortunate at around noon that's when i experienced that i was breathing hiyo mimi ilikuwa miezi mbili miezi mbili na nusu ikalipuka tena bila ililipuka nikaenda huko district haya wakanipima wakaniambia haijatoka sana lakini nisijifanyishe kazi mzito nisitembee sana nisiname sana maybe one month two months maybe nitakuwa na mimi unakaa mwaka inaisha ya pili inaisha ukigoja tu hmm? kwa kiambia mtu ata daktari hivi rafiki umuulize hii shida nakuuliza ushaifanya kwa maua ah au unabaki unajua shida yako kwenye ilitoka We looked at the harmful effects of chemical use in uh, different uh, uh, types of farming uh, which included uh, flower farming and uh, there was a considerable uh, amount of uh, chemicals in uh, uh, people who worked in those uh, uh, farms and uh, a number of them were uh, affected health wise hiyo maji ya irrigation saa zingine huwa ina overflow kamvut zimetoboka zinaingiza maji hiyo maji ikiingia inaweza kuchoma miguu Mwanza tu kujikuna hapo hadi ikafura tu ikafika kiwango hicho Kuna kuna kitu sijui imetokezea ni ngumu ngozi huwa inakauka Hapa hivi Some people get skin uh, conditions such as uh, kind of shingles that develop and then uh, also uh, an allergic uh, type of uh, uh, sensitivity. Nilifura kabisa nikachikuna mwili wote. Lakini sasa ukimwambia kupe barua uende hospitali kubwa ataki If not in a position to attend to sick workers, most farm clinics refer patients to this government hospital or to private ones around Naivasha. A medical practitioner who once worked in one of the clinics told us that in many instances the facilities were mainly not used to treat but to conceal ailments when workers visited the facilities complaining of certain medical conditions. Uh, 
kuwa inatuliza tu kwa muda two weeks tena inarudi hasa nimeishi na hiyo shida mpaka leo hii sijawahi pata matibabu kamili in naivasha Medical records indicate that the area leads in miscarriages during pregnancy and malformations in children born to those who work in flower farms, as is evident in the legs of the girl who is walking. Efforts to get recent medical data from the management of this government hospital were not successful. I might give information that might be used against a farm and I do not want to be involved in that he told us after numerous cancellations of appointments for an interview with him A senior medical officer at this hospital also refused to share any information and the same also applied to Poly Hospital reaffirming accusations that medical practitioners are aiding and abetting the violation of workers rights in Naivasha In the process of making this documentary, we also witnessed several industrial actions in not one, but four flower farms. It all started at Prima Rosa, located in Yahururu, followed by Windsor Farm in Thika, located in the central part of the country. Next in line were Isinia Roses and Flora, both located in Kajado, some 60 kilometers south of Nairobi. It is during such occasions that workers poured out their anger and frustration. Sazile unapatikana na mimba Rajesh bora uchulikane mimba imetoka kiasi hadi kwa ya miezi mbili ama tatu unafukuzwa tena wa mama wanaenda huku kwa maidi kama saizi unaona kuna maidi hata wengine wanalipiwa huko These workers appear to have been pushed to the wall and they are angry very angry Bora na tuzi wa Afrika ni manki hebu angalia mazee eh, angalia tu angalia tu eh anaongea lugha tatu ine ya ine ni matusi Hakuna kidasa kazi angalia hakuna mpango unaona wewe mwenyewe kwanza kwanza, 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 kwanza hii kazi ni ngumu <laughs> vile hii kazi ni ngumu kuamuka masaa ya kuamuka hawaangaliangi kuingia kazi ni saa 12 kamili kutoka ni saa 12 ya jioni tangu miaka ya nyimepita tulikuwa tunanyanyazwa kwa hii kambuni tukaonelea ni heli tutafute mwakizi wetu kutoka union mwenye atakuwa akisikia zida zetu tukachagua Evans Ratemo Evans Ratemo tangu tumjague tukaona mabadiliko kwa hii kambuni mimi nilifukuzwa hii kambuni kwa kuteta na heshiala huo heshiala aitwa mamanya akaniambia akaniita abadi insaita niliamuzwa tu kicheki kialivu kama ile mtu anapeleka seli kama ule ameuona nikachimamishwa juu nikapiwa jeki na hata nikapiwa nikaambiwa wae fanya nini toka nje they down the tool yesterday to around the 9 demanding the, the management to give a commencement date a commencement date for the for the for the CBA and that's what you have seen they have written on the door that no CBA no work msahara ni jiri ine mwezi mzima 4000 sasa ndio tunataka CBA ikaliwe chini tupate msahara mzuri ya kulisha baka familia zetu At Isinia Roses, workers down their tools after the management reduced their pay despite the increasing economic hardships. While on a visit to the flower auction in Holland, we were shown flowers from companies in Kenya, among them those from Isinia Roses. Inicia. These are the workers behind the beautiful flowers. Baga sasa nganza kuchukuna sasa mpaka imekuwa kubwa. Mimi ni mfanyakazi wa PJ Flora. 
mimi ni mfanyakazi nafanya na ka na department ya tawa. Tukipiga tawa mwanamke mnapitana hapa ya anaenda huko anakata maua we unaenda huko na tawa. Imagine ni hiyo dawa inanuka paka ukiwa umetoka kabla hujakula unaweza anguka. After receiving information of the strike, the area trade union official arrived here only to find himself under arrest moments afterwards. One of the senior most AP there slapped me. When they were taking me to the vehicle of the, even it was not a police vehicle, it was one of the company's vehicle. Even while in the vehicle, they really beat me on the way going back, going, to taking me to the police station at uh, Isinya. Kwa saa hii tunafanyia miambili na kuminasita, au salawe nziki wandani. Basic ni 155 kwa siku. Tunafanya kazi kama punda. Kipima hakuna makuna kupumzika. Na kupumzika inabida ujinyime lunch. Ndi umalize kipima. Mama akienda kuchifungua. Hata kuna mungina alichifungua. Dayo na kesha waka ingia kazi. Sababu wako na shida na wakopa kufanya nini kufutu wa kazi. Kwa sababu waka chifungua, waka fungia, waka katoka, katoka kwa nyumba, waka kucha kazi hili. As we followed the events surrounding the series of strikes in the four flower farms, it was quite clear that the management had some members of the administration, the police, court officials and labor officers under their control. Some of our big men in this country are given shares to take care of the, the farms. During our investigations, we were given names of individuals in the government, police officers, court and Ministry of Labor officials, as well as certain trade union members accused of working in the interest of some flower farms. The Kenya Human Rights Commission is one of the organizations that got attracted to the worries in the cut flower industry and in 2011 it commissioned for a research into Kenya's cut flower sector. How better do we make our production chains, you know, human? This is a forum where the findings were to be adopted jointly by investors, the government and institutions connected to the industry. As we all know, globally, Kenya is the fourth largest um, producer, so we're an actor internationally. And the kind of um, standards that we set over here, therefore, are important not just for our country, but for our region and, 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 and for the global economy. I have the pressure of presenting the findings of uh, Group 1. The report is very objective, it has a balanced view, and it's very courageous, especially highlighting uh, those who cooperated, those who did not cooperate. It seems everything is revolving around the low pay. If workers were paid well, then probably some workers would be better off. We also raised the issue about um, whether some allegations that have been brought forth, what is the mechanism that has been used to verify the authenticity. Presenting the report to the media three weeks later, the Kenya Human Rights Commission released the final draft during a breakfast meeting at a five-star hotel in Nairobi. Wilting in bloom, meaning that um, whereas flowers are blooming, the workers are suffering. We saw in the film the sort of impact and also the neglect of uh, women's rights. Uh, and these are risks whose impacts will only begin to be fully appreciated later, uh, long after some of the companies mentioned here have pocketed their profits and gone. The workers' union has limited human resource capacity um, for them to be able to fight for workers' rights. We have very undemocratic and poor governance structures of this union. Among the participants were three flower farm employees and after the official ceremony, they agreed to be interviewed by the press. A few days after this media launch, one of the workers on this flower farm in Naivasha, who is the union representative and also attended this function, received four warning letters at the same time. His two colleagues were not spared either because they also started to receive unusual monitoring from some members of the management. With his face swollen, we managed to talk to Philip Kipsang just a few hours after he was assaulted. 
It took time for him to compose himself adequately to share his ordeal with us. Kip Sang is blaming Johan Remus for his woes. The accused is the general manager of the 70-acre Vandenberg farm in Naivasha, a business owned by the Vandenberg family. A visit to the farm's website will indicate that it is a multinational company with other farms located in Holland and China. The Naivasha farm that produces largely for the European market was started in January 2004. This is what you see now. It's uh, the main office of uh, FFV Bondgenote, the biggest trade union in Holland. <laughs> This is a preview session of a video film on the plight of workers in the Netherlands. It's the premiere, so you are invited to a very important... Uh... The session is being held at FNV Complex, headquarters of one of the biggest trade union organizations in Holland. Most employees in flower farms in this country are from Eastern Europe, mainly Poland. Some of the workers we approached for interviews declined, partly due to the language barrier and, of course, just like in Kenya, fear of victimization. No, join me. <laughs> Holland is a rich country, but also here there's a lot of people who have to fight daily for, uh, yeah, what you can say, decent, uh, decent living, uh, de decent wages, uh, a, a wage that you can live on, uh, having uh, a fair uh, circumstances to work, uh, that kind of uh, very basic things, workers' rights. This is Africa from the air. And there is no doubt that one can not only see the effects of global warming, but can also feel them. Kenya is no exception. As a continent, the consequences of deforestation and less rain are deadly and some of the communities have given up and have left fate to take over. Like our mothers, when they were coming to fetch water from this river, it's not even 10 years ago. They just came, you just come remove the sand. You see, by the, by the time you can remove, just only remove the sand, that the top, you see now there is no water and it has rained. The Maasai, arguably Kenya's symbolic community, inhabit Kajiado district. For generations, the community has been looking after their livestock by adapting to nature. The Maasai simply love their cows and goats. Isenya ni mahali mchanga mchanga ambao una maji ndani. Kumbuka zamani si tulikuwa kwa hiyo mchanga ule sand tukitoa ilikuwa inatoka maji. These savanna plains have not only attracted migrants from other parts of the country, but also farms, huge ones too. Because Naivasha is now clogged with little room for expansion, flower farming has extended to this area beginning in the year 2000. We paid a visit to Kajiado to find out how the industry has been received by the locals. When these uh, guys come and buy land, and now they change uh, use because this land is particularly for keeping livestock and farming and you find others now going for horticultural farming like uh, the flowers hata ule mzee huyo huyo mwenye ako na hiyo nyumba ya red ndiye alianza kuchimba kisima hapa the first kisima huku kwa hii area alafu hii yangu alafu mama mwingine anaishi huko chini na hakuna mwenye sahii ako na maji several years ago this family had invested in a 25-meter-deep water well, but it is now completely dry. The same story is very common in Kajiado. 
Due to the lesser amount of rain that has been registered in the recent past, they further invested in irrigation equipment, primarily to grow their own food and later to sell the surplus so as to enable them to get money for school fees for their children, among other basics in life. They were doing exactly that, but after they became neighbors with this flower farm, their investments have gone to waste and now they can no longer irrigate crops nor get fresh water. Inategemea na mvua. Na siku hizi mvua inanyesha hata inaweza inaweza enda kwa miaka 2 na irudi tena inyeshi kidogo. This family was further forced to break through the fence erected by the investor after he acquired a huge parcel of land. In the process of securing his property, the investor has in turn blocked the community from accessing the river. A member of the family this boy is struggling to fetch water meant just to irrigate young trees in the compound as the water in the containers is polluted by effluent from the farm, making it useless for human consumption. As one of the indications of pollution, although in water, these trees are in the drying process. This was once a flower farm belonging to a senior official in the Kenyan government that was abandoned five years ago. Due to drought that was experienced recently, cows belonging to this Maasai neighbor made their way here and this is the result after the flock consumed pasture on the farm. I learned that my cows are sick, very sick, others are bleeding, they, they will not stand, others are diarrhearing. And even the animals which, which ate this uh, uh, animal, they, they've actually all died. The dogs, the hyenas and the vultures which, which ate this animal, they've also died because of the chemicals, because of the poisonous. Until recently, Mzema Pena's family and flock have been consuming water from this source. But one day, Hours after he had taken his usual bath along this riverbank, his skin started to itch and the situation is getting worse by the day, despite his taking a cocktail of drugs as treatment. <laughs> Together with other locals, Mzema Pena protested against the pollution of the river to the administration. But for almost a year now, the government is yet to respond to their concerns as promised by the district commissioner. Tulijaribu kulia. Kukimbia hapa na pali kwenda kwa serikali, kulipoti, nini. Atuja shukulikiwa. Hapa ndiyo tulikuwa tunakunya maji ya muto ambayo ilikuwa ni safi. Lakini wakati ilipo ansa kuaribika, na maji ya maua kuingia katika muto tukaachana naye kwa sababu imeanza kuleta madhara tunaanza kuona appearance tofauti tofauti kwa mbuzi na ngombe siwezi naenda kushota maji pale huko juu anunua maji ya mwenyewe One of the elders happened to access the report that was sent from the government chemist regarding the issue. He was only allowed to read it, but not to make copies. I saw the letter saying that the water is polluted and we need to know the source of the pollution. <laughs> In Kajiado, records show that several people have been forced to migrate against their will after investors frustrated families in moves meant to force them to sell parcels of land to pave way for farm expansions. Sai hata kuni yenye ikikauka hapa chini na mimi ni jirani watoto wangu waende chini ama mimi mwenyewe niende na nirokote hiyo kuni wanakuja kuninyang'anya. Those who fail to give in live frustrated and in constant fear. Some of them are now marooned and are forced to trek long distances to satisfy their basic needs. Siko fans ambaye sinapea hizi maua upepo usiku na sinapiga kelele sana. Na wakati 
e, waka, wakati e, upepo inapobadilika kuja pande hii arufu ya madawa ya maua you all thought that you're going to protect the environment together you thought you're going to be partners you thought this guy was going to be your friend in conserving the environment but he turns out against you for um, the reasons no, known to them and um, they degrade the land the environment a lot of pollution the corridors have been closed with the flower farms they are built all over the corridors, the wild corridors. So you find the, the flowers themselves, they are the problem. They, they didn't knew that they, 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 will, they will have problem with it, accessing the grazing areas. So that is one of the problems. So they are actually regretting selling their land. In Isinya, the community has significantly lost the forest cover. Due to the sheer size of the farms, hundreds of indigenous trees have been cut to pave way for the construction of the greenhouses in which rose flowers are grown. This has, to a large extent, not only worsened water scarcity, but also the degradation of soil, lack of pasture, and a decrease in honey production. As we were traveling in one of the localities, we came across a group of men who were uploading logs onto a tractor. Among those supervising them was a person who we later came to know was working as a manager on this flower farm. He was supervising the felling of acacia trees at the already dry Isinya River and by doing so he was making things worse. Upon seeing the crew, they appeared anxious and chose their moment to make a quick exit from the scene of their criminal act. One of the main reasons why Naivasha got the attention of the flower industry is because of the availability of water from this lake. The Maasai name for it is translated as huge stormy lake. That is no longer the case today. Kutoka hapa penye tuko hapa hii landing central landing beach tulikuwa tunaenda 5 kilometers ndio tupate lake. Basically, we, we've lost. We used to have tilapias in the lake and uh, at the time as we're speaking, uh, Lake Nevasha is not uh, offering any tilapias. We're having uh, uh, different species of fishes, fish that uh, we never used to have. Na, wenye wana tuatarisha sana ni hawa kulima wenye wamezingira hii mashamba. Hizi waletu. Sababu maji yao hawachimbi ndani, wanatumia kunyonya jiziwa. Although it is obvious that the flower industry has been largely responsible for the current situation, flower farms around the lake have denied any responsibility. Several reports have blamed global warming, overfishing and cutting down of trees in catchment areas surrounding the lake as some of the main causes for the reduction of the level of the water here, a home to a wide variety of animals, birds and fish. Although the claims are partially true, investors do not mention the quantity of water that they use to irrigate the millions of rose flowers. They also do not comment on the numerous accusations of resultant pollution that in the recent past is blamed for the death of fish in this lake. One even blamed the population explosion in the town, forgetting the fact that the flower industry is responsible, in the first place, for attracting thousands of migrant workers from across Kenya to Naivasha. The amount of water drawn from this lake by the residents is far much less compared to that consumed by the tens of flower farms for the last two decades. Some of the flower farms, they are discharging um, their wastewater untreated uh, into the
the environment. We actually have a whole file full of complaints which I get from flower farms, from all, all sorts of facilities. So there's a lot of goodwill from the public and even from other government agencies. But they, they could be less goodwill from the flower farm operators. Charles Kasuku is among those who are engaged in addressing the emerging implications as a result of the flower industry in Naivasha. Himself a former worker in one of the flower farms, he gave us a brief on the situation on the ground. These are the kind of the structures that uh, most of these flower farm workers are living in. Where children are left to be loitering within the estate and there are issues of rapes, defilement. Most of the people cannot afford house help. They are left with two options. Either the child is left in the street loitering or two, the child is taken to a baby care. Now, some of these baby cares, they are not professional. This is one of the several daycare centers found in the neighborhood where the majority of flower workers reside. On this particular day, this lady had only two kids to take care of, but she told us that on a busy day, workers hand over up to seven children. She was a bit hesitant to talk about the home initially, but after explaining to her that we were only interested in the plight of farm workers, she gave in. Despite the restrictions, we managed to get pictures from different flower farms depicting some of the scenes that flower investors would definitely not wish to be seen by a huge audience. This is a worker's camp. And these pictures were taken at Enkasiti Farm in Fika. At some point, we found this tractor belonging to Isinia Roses dumping this pile just a few meters away from the river. Inside the farm premises, as well as in the neighborhood, Plastic materials, among them empty packages that once contained chemicals used in the flower industry, were scattered all over. At Enka City Farm, we captured a boy walking next to an area where flowers were once grown. Behind this perimeter wall is where the boy lives with his parents. Hundreds of employees on this flower farm are housed just a few meters away from where the flowers are harvested. Given the amount of chemicals used in flower farming, there is no doubt that people who reside here are at risk. I had the pleasure to visit flower farms in UK. And I was amazed how the workers are sleeping. They are sleeping in nice cabins. They have bricks, they have TV, they have hot water. The crew managed to capture the following scene at one of the several farms belonging to Karuturi flower farm in Naivasha. This area, which is next to the greenhouse, is just a few meters away from the lake, one of the reasons why there is good pasture for these dairy cows to feed on. As we were in the locality, a lone worker emerged from the greenhouse pushing a handcart full of waste as a result of rose flower farming. As if the contents were a delicacy, the cows immediately stopped feeding on grass and rushed to consume what was brought out from the greenhouse even before the consignment was fully downloaded. Bearing in mind the amount of chemicals used in flower farming, chances are that the milk from these cows could also contain traces of chemicals. But the main question here is, up to what level? Mm -hmm. 
Unlike our experiences in some places, we were given access to Simbi and Ravine flower farms. In the Netherlands, we were warmly received at this farm. It's a lot of energy, but it's about equal as the air freight per stem of rows. You must know that in Africa, uh, you, per square meter, you produce less roses. Here, per square meter, we produce more roses. The crew was free to document activities as long as the process did not interfere with the normal proceedings. Uh, here in this company work uh, 30 people and they grade all the roses from our 20 hectares of, of roses. This is flower collection shed uh, where we hold our flowers temporarily before transportation to the cold room. We'll go inside to see what goes on in the harvesting process. We are working with international systems of production and uh, it's the same, same systems which the international investors are actually applying. So I think we are equally competing. This is uh, the temperature you see here and this is humanity, uh, how many uh, heat we do. Normally we, uh, what people say in, uh, in Africa, you have uh, 20 people for one hectare. Here we have eight people for one hectare. Uh, they're working 250% faster. The two Kenyan farms are members of the Fair Trade Initiative. Fair Trade is a system of uh, doing business uh, that guarantees that uh, both the producer and the consumer get a fair deal. These projects are very, very important uh, thanks to uh, Fair Trade because of the premiums that we receive. We are supporting uh, six surrounding schools. In uh, the social projects, uh, we have Camelillo AP Camp, which we want to improve the security of the area. We have Dark various boreholes. This is a training session for PJ Day flower workers' representatives being held in Isinia. The Isinia meeting is conducted by KOTU, the central organization of trade unions, the umbrella body of trade unions in Kenya, while this one in Naivasha was conducted by Community-Based Development Services, a non-governmental organization that focuses more on awareness of rights-related issues in the country. Number three, child care. Number four, discrimination of women, including sexual harassment, as the worst form of discrimination. Last three, rape cases. It's interesting to get people to actually talk and explain uh, what they experience rather than just uh, do a cosmetic analysis of, uh, of what is the problem. Although trade unions and members from civil society claim to be working for the betterment of such workers, they appear not to be reading from the same script. We find pressure groups. Uh, these are normally human rights people non-governmental uh, organizations, but we call them briefcase NGOs. These ones are out to get to please their donors, their masters. And if they say that we are actually achieving the human rights uh, and also disseminating and sensitizing workers and servicing the members, uh, actually we'll have closed their taps. The history of uh, trade unions here is that uh, the officials within the trade union movement are very corrupt people. A lot of time they are in league with the, the rest of the corrupt elite. Sorry, I don't, I don't know whether anybody is here from Kapo, but I'm telling you a fact. <laughs> Backdoor phones will come. Oh, this is an issue. Okay, fine. We can settle it. No problem. So, you know, this is not good legal system in the country. Civil society is in fact supposed to just be complementing, but there is a void. The union is not doing it. And that is why when uh, civil society organizations get into doing it, this trade unions come up in arms against the civil society. A significant number of flower investors have exploited this weakness and continue to mistreat their workers. While investors are in a position to hire a battery of legal advisors, the income of these workers does not allow them to hire lawyers on their own behalf. Justice is simply beyond their reach and notorious investors are more than aware of this fact.
Vandenberg shop steward Philip Kipsan was later accused of not only attempting to physically harm the human resource manager in his office, but the police further told him that they were in the process of opening up a file to investigate him regarding the theft of unknown company property. If you start to ask for a better salary or overtime compensation or whatever benefits you uh, think you're entitled to and you're right you are entitled to, you simply kicked out. Together with Ratemu, some of these workers at Primarosa were sacked. Regarding Flora and Isinia flower farms, the Kenya Agricultural Planters Workers Union went to court after the employer pinned a notice at the gate saying that he had dismissed all the striking workers. Lawrence, the union official who was already out on bail, was again re-arrested with new claims of forging union membership application forms. After four days of being on strike, Workers at the Windsor flower farm were all sacked without pay and those interested in continuing to work here were told to reapply for consideration. In a rare press conference at PJ Dave offices, the management lined up to tell their side of the story. The other reason the union is fighting us because we have taken them to court for sports signatures. If they are they are, they are surely, the they interest is that they have to get people unionized. You don't have to go on the streets and then incite employees. The respondent be here by restraint, by themselves, agents, employees, and whoever is acting on their instructions from inciting and engaging the, engaging the employees of the claimant to participate in any strike pending the hearing determined uh, of this application. And I'm not saying who is right or who is not right. It's not my business. I came from Europe. I have agreement. I want people in the agreement. Also in attendance was a businessman who had jetted into the country to assess the situation after four days of strike action. He appeared visibly angry. It appeared that he was more concerned about deliveries to Europe than about the welfare of these workers. You have to understand we built 10 years. Supply to supermarkets, big chain, now all the lines broken. According to their website, PJ Dave is a group of companies run by Mr. PJ Dave, his wife Elizabeth Dave and son Hitesh Dave. These are PJ Dave Flowers, Isinia Roses and Flora companies. While we visited Flora Holland in January 2012, we were presented with a souvenir book celebrating a hundred years of colour, highlighting remarkable accounts of people behind the flower auction. Among those featured in the book was Praveen Dave. Products from PJ Group of Companies have been fated for quality in the Netherlands. He's not a champion, he's a destroyer, a community destroyer. Owners have lost hearts of animals because of these chemicals. Although some of the issues discussed in this documentary have been raised before, it is alarming that very little progress has been made in addressing them. Job insecurity, poor remunerations, sexual harassment, poor management and exposure to hazardous chemicals, among other environmental hazards, are still taking place with impunity in most flower farms in Kenya. Sad to mention is that those who try to speak out are in turn victimized, as were Philip, Lawrence, and Ratemo. Ile kilio changu saidi ni serikali ama human rights. Waingie pale ndani ndio waweze kuchua ni serikali inaendelea kwa hii kampuni. What is taking place on these flower farms? Wakisikia audit is on the way. Wanaanza kuji prepare two weeks or one week ahead. Ili auditors wakikuja wakute compound iko clean, nyasi imefiekwa, dustbins imewekwa, wale watu wakupanda jua hizo manyumba wakijenga, wakona hizo head, head cuffs. Lakini auditors wakisha ondoka, vitu zote zinarudi. Audits are done from up higher the chain. But the level of worker involvement it's very limited. You know you cannot audit change, you cannot audit attitude, you cannot audit mentality. 
you can audit practices, systems, and all that kind of thing. But companies should engage in the process. By engaging in the process means they have to take it on board, they have to own it. And this is what is not happening. Maar het mooie van uh, wat wij in de tuinbouw zien is nog steeds van dat je bepaalde kwaliteiten moet hebben van hoe je een gewas aanvoelt, hoe je, uh, hoe je met mensen omgaat. En ja, dat kan je niet afdwingen met geld. Dat doe je als persoon en dat doe je hoe je met mensen omgaat. En ja, ik denk dat daar nog heel veel uh, te leren is, ook in Kenia. Ja. If it's not for that company, she would not be sick today. She would be very healthy. And singe kwa siko shule, singe kwa still in school. Kama huyu mtu anataka afanywe kazi vizuri ndio aweze kuuza hiyo maua. Na yeye ni lazima naye angalie masirai ya hawa watu. Ajue kama ni hali ya, 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 ya usafi, ajue kama ni hali ya hospitali, kama ni shule, kama ni hiyo manyumba ama kama ni hiyo mshahara. As it is evident in Kajiado, the Maasai community that is already marginalized is experiencing negative impacts more than a decade after the introduction of large-scale flower farming in their area. The industry is not only affecting the development of the community, but largely contributing to defacing the identity of Kenya. <laughs> The Dutch auction has flourished to become the world's trading center for flowers and plants. A message to them. Ooh. Um, I, I, I think I, from my point of view, I would like to uh, give them an extremely uh, compliment, big compliment. And I would like to tell them on behalf of all those consumers in, uh, in Europe, what kind of joy they bring with the products they are helping to produce. From the dwindling of natural resources in Naivasha to the negative environmental and cultural impact in Kajiado, the flower industry stands accused of aggravating the situation. I want to see the children of my children tomorrow prospering in life. But with this case, I'm too worried. That should not be the same. Hata nikipita tu nione greenhouse nasikia uchungu mwingi sana. Na wenye maua wanaendelea kunona kujaza tu. Na si mashida inatukula. Uchungu hmm? sana. Sisi hatuoni faida ya maua. Faida yetu ni hasara. A consumer has the responsibility. They need to spend their money in a, in a much more careful manner. They have to think about the costs of what they're doing. The fact that their happiness in presenting someone with a bouquet of flowers is probably impacting negatively on somebody in Kenya. They have a responsibility to ensure that these flowers are grown in an environment with standards, social, environmental, that are not detrimental to the people who tend to these flowers. If you enable a company that does not care about sexual harassment, if you enable a company that works women until uh, night time and they have to walk through coffee plantations to continue doing business, then therein lies your obligations. I kindly request uh, the, the Dutch consumer, the British, the German, the Russian, the Indian, and any other consumer uh, to come on the ground and see the damage these flowers are causing to the Maasai. It is only when the workers, consumers, and the environment are adequately protected that we can all become happy to enjoy the romance of and profits from flowers. Otherwise, in the eyes of these people, unless drastic measures are taken, and very soon, generations to come will suffer and consider flowers dangerous, however nice they look. 
As the saying goes, you are responsible forever for what you have tamed. You are responsible for your rose. <laughs>